Scientists for a long time have been debating the idea of an expanding universe with the general consensus being that it is ever-expanding. The universe for us humans is endless and we've come to recognize that it has been perpetually growing ever since the Big Bang. Numerous studies, theories, and experiments have been directed to prove that it is. But what if we were wrong all this while? Recent images from the James Webb Telescope that we've all seen have brought a new approach to this theory questioning the very basis of the cosmos. Now, scientists are arguing the very existence of its expansion with a handful disagreeing to it entirely. Were we wrong? Is the universe really static? Let's find out. Now, to discuss the expansion of the universe, we first have to address its formation. Currently, the most widely accepted theory of the birth of the universe is the Big Bang Theory. Before we start, let's just look at what the Big Bang is. The name Big Bang doesn't really tell the full story about the expanding universe that we see. We observe an infinite universe that is expanding into itself. The name Big Bang determines the idea of an outburst at one time and place with a center. The universe doesn't truly have a center, which is why the name is pretty deceptive. The Big Bang was a process that occurred everywhere at once and over a large portion of time, not at a point in time. We know this because we see galaxies moving away from each other, not from a central point. And we see the heat that was left over from the early times, and that heat is spread throughout the universe. When we look closely at the cosmos, we can see heat that was present around 380,000 years after the universe's expansion began 13.8 billion years ago, which we refer to as the Big Bang. This heat covers the entire sky and fills the universe, and it still does. NASA and ESA built two satellites called the Cosmic Background Explorer, or COBE, and the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, or WMAP, which were able to map it. The universe was very smooth at this point, with only tiny temperature fluctuations. Since we somewhat understand the concept, let's talk about what's actually happening out there. Most people think that the universe began with a big bang, but that doesn't paint the full picture. Many scientists, even atheistic, naturalistic ones, are aware of the numerous issues plaguing the now fundamental idea of the big bang. What makes this battle of wits even more lopsided is that the new images from the James Webb Space Telescope haven't helped those who believe in the big bang. Although it's usually not heard of, there has been dissatisfaction with the current model that we have been running with, and that all begins with the Big Bang. Ever since it was first pointed out by Georges Lemaitre nearly a century ago, the debate was not expected to be helped by the James Webb Space Telescope. Physicist Eric J. Lerner is the author of a book called The Big Bang Never Happened, which was published in 1992. His argument is simple and speaks for itself. I suppose that writing an entire book about an idea with such a simple name shouldn't be any harder to understand than the color of a tomato. You get what I mean, right? This makes his approach quite interesting, but it doesn't make him entirely wrong. Lerner further points out the situation in a long-winded explanation. To everyone who sees them, the new James Webb Space Telescope images of the cosmos are beautifully awe-inspiring. But to most professional astronomers and cosmologists, they are also astounding, not at all what was predicted by theory. The images show surprisingly many galaxies, galaxies that are surprisingly smooth, surprisingly small, and surprisingly old. Plenty of surprises, and not necessarily pleasant ones. This obviously doesn't mean that the Big Bang is obsolete or that physicists and astronomers are suddenly becoming creationists. Many will come up with better methods to justify the Big Bang Theory if they disagree with the interpretation of the data. The issue is that the data does not match what would be expected if the Big Bang happened. Lerner further states, Why do the JWST's images inspire panic among cosmologists? And what theory's predictions are they contradicting? The papers don't actually say. 
The truth that these papers don't report is that the hypothesis that the JWST's images are blatantly and repeatedly contradicting is the Big Bang hypothesis that the universe began 14 billion years ago in an incredibly hot, dense state and has been expanding ever since. Since that hypothesis has been defended for decades as unquestionable truth by the vast majority of cosmological theorists, the new data is causing these theorists to panic. So, does that mean that the knowledge we've been fed until now is incorrect? As is usually the case with questions about the cosmos, the answer is not as bright as daylight, but is towards the gloomier side. People around the world have been greatly impressed by the images from the James Webb Space Telescope, even those who frequently spend their time arguing about cosmic issues. They too took a minute or two to look at those spectacular images like the SMAX 0723 Galaxy Cluster, which was released on July 11th. The images and data gathered by the JWST will make for a treasure trove from which astronomers and astrophysics expect to reap many benefits for many years to come. It will be no surprise if you see more reports claiming to have discovered something amazing. The issue is that not all reports based on the telescope's findings are equally valid. Many people on the internet are confused by Eric J. Lerner's claim that the JWST data shows that the Big Bang did not happen. Lerner has published several hundred articles as a writer, and he is also a scientist of esteem. He believes that the universe should be static and immortal and that a divine creator might come along and fix things. This might get people thinking. Like Lerner, there have been several others who have dabbled in the theory that the universe is static, such as Fred Hoyle, the astrophysicist famous for explaining how fusion reactors in stars create chemical elements, and Hannes Alfen, whose pioneering work in magnetohydrodynamics won him the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1970. But is that theory really true? Lerner, in his paper, which discusses a static universe, explains that it is not too hard to justify why the galaxies captured by the James Webb Telescope are incompatible with the Big Bang Theory. If the universe is expanding, there must be a strange optical illusion. Objects such as galaxies do not appear to become smaller and smaller with increasing distance as space expands. Beyond a certain point, they begin to appear larger and larger. This is because their light should have left them when they were closer to us. Ordinary, non-expanding space where objects look smaller proportionally to their distance is similar to this. If the universe is not expanding and redshift is proportional to distance, then the galaxies shown by the JWST are the same size as the ones we see near us. What the JWST images show is that the shrinking is continuing. Even galaxies that are brighter and have more mass than our own Milky Way look smaller in these images than in pictures taken with the Hubble Space Telescope. The new galaxies have redshifts that are also two to three times higher. This is not at all what is expected in an expanding universe, but it is precisely what Lerner and colleague Ricardo Scarpa predicted would happen in a non-expanding universe with redshift proportional to distance. Since 2014, they had already published results based on HST images that show that galaxies with redshifts up to five match the expectations of non-expanding ordinary space. So, they were confident that the JWST would show the same thing, which it already has, for galaxies having redshifts as high as 12. If it is assumed that the universe is not expanding and that redshift is proportional to distance, then, the galaxies that the JWST shows are just as far away as the galaxies near to us. But, from the standpoint of the expanding universe hypothesis for the Big Bang, these distant galaxies must be minuscule intrinsically to compensate for the optical illusion. They must be implausibly small. One galaxy mentioned in the paper, known as GHZ2, is far more luminous than the Milky Way, Yet, it is calculated to be only 300 light-years in radius, 150 times smaller than the radius of our Milky Way. 
Its surface brightness would be 600 times as bright as the brightest galaxy in the local universe. The density of the new galaxies would be tens of thousands of times greater than the density of present-day galaxies. Small, smooth galaxies suggest that the universe is not expanding, which implies that there was no Big Bang. Scientists who believe in the Big Bang theory have known for a long time from the Hubble Space Telescope images that their ideas require the existence of these tiny, extremely dense galaxies. JWST has exacerbated the problem. The same researchers who think that tiny galaxies grow up into big galaxies by crashing into each other and merging say that this is how big galaxies were made. A comparison to this hypothetical merger process would be to imagine a tiny toy car a centimeter long that nonetheless weighs as much as an SUV. Over time, the tiny car would grow into a real SUV by colliding with many other toy cars. But further analysis by the JWST has also challenged this far-out scenario. You would expect fender dents in the colliding cars if you believed the toy car story. And as theorists within the Big Bang model expected, astronomers did indeed see badly mangled galaxies with numerous collisions or mergers. What the JWST showed was mostly smooth disks and spiral shapes similar to the galaxies we see today. According to the data in some articles, smooth spiral galaxies were 10 times more numerous than what theory had predicted, which would challenge our ideas about mergers being a very common process. This data utterly contradicts the merger theory. Without numerous galactic mergers, it is impossible for tiny galaxies to grow to be a hundred times bigger. Therefore, they were not small to begin with, so the optical illusion predicted by the expanding universe theory doesn't exist. But without an illusion, there can be no expansion. The illusion is an inevitable consequence of expansion. Thus, Big Bang supporters are worried. Small, smooth galaxies imply no expansion and thus no Big Bang. Since nothing could have existed before the Big Bang, the existence of these galaxies demonstrates that the Big Bang did not occur. Now, this of course is just one perspective among several thousands that are out and about. Lerner and his colleagues have made it a mission to disprove the Big Bang theory and every so often that can be more harmful than fulfilling. Despite ongoing research, many people still believe in the Big Bang Theory, and studies show that, though we can't pinpoint it with 100% accuracy, we are very close to proving its existence. As is regularly the case with matters related to the cosmos, there will be those who believe otherwise and those who believe in a static universe. But that theory might not be completely false as it seems. With the Herculean effort of scientists, astronomers, and researchers all around the world, we are confident that we will soon uncover the root of this issue. Until further research is conducted, the theory that has dominated science class for the past 50 years still appears to be sound. So, what do you think? Is the universe really expanding? If not, what do you think is truly happening? And what more are we going to find out about the beginning of the universe in the coming years? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.